YouTubers. I know it's been a while since we did a pickup video. Uh, it's been a little slack. We haven't really found anything. Um, as you can see, we have one of the mini slayers here. Hi. Decided to roll over into my video. And his Ninja Turtle pajamas. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Sit down. But, um, like I said, with the weather and everything, it's been really cold. Of course, it's been, you know, winter months and everything. We really haven't been able to find much. Um, but <clears throat> people who follow me on my Redware page have seen some of the pickups. Um, some of the recent things I've picked up. 32X, Sega CD, TurboGrafx-16, uh, Sega Master System, a power base converter for Master System games to play in the Genesis 1 console. Uh, you know, some little rare stuff. Um... One thing I did pick up, um, and it was in one of my um, pictures, though. Real quick, uh, will you hand me that box up here, please? Uh, bear with me, guys. I totally <laughs> forgot I picked this up. Um, I picked this up with a bunch of games, and uh, it's one of the things I wanted to add to my collection. And by the time I sold some of the games and kept some of the games that came with it that I wanted and traded some into GameStop, I actually broke even on this. And uh, so, in a, in a way, I got this for free. Plus, I still have about nine or ten games that came with it that I could still sell and make a little extra profit off of uh, to help fund my other adventures. Um, as you can tell, this is complete in box, original manual, and everything. Um, I usually don't collect systems like handheld DSIs and things like that unless they're like Zelda's, but. This one was in such mint condition, and I had one before, and I sold it, and I wish I hadn't have. But um, it is a 25th, I don't know if you can see that or not, let me get a little closer, it is a 25th Mario Anniversary system. Uh, the lighting's kind of bad in here, so you might be able to see it. But it has a toad, a fire flower, uh, fire flower and a star, and of course, it is a DSi XL. Um, and when I say this thing, I don't know if you can tell it really in the camera or not, but when I say this is in mint condition, it is in mint condition. Um, these are going for about 80 to 100 bucks on eBay just for the systems. And um, I paid $100, I think it was. Um, maybe 125 I can't remember. But uh, for this and a total of 24 games, um, there's tons of like extra styluses they gave me with it. Um, this actually comes with a special stylus that the DSI, um, this, this DSI particularly came with and a little washcloth or a little screen cloth. But anyway, uh, not a bad pickup for me, uh, especially since I like collecting uh, different things, you know, and um, in the end, you know, I have no money into this. So it makes it extra better <laughs> when you collect. Um, but uh, that was one of the good, the better finds of this uh, that I've had here in the past couple of weeks. But uh, what's in this box in the bottom, I'm saving it for last, is the best thing I have found in the wild. I don't know when. It's one of the holy grail items for me. But um, as David was talking about in one of the other videos that we have, um, we went to Still Collectibles, which is a retro store here in Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, it's about an hour drive for us. Um, very nice people. It's a husband and wife team. Um, they're very knowledgeable. You can tell they're gamers. They're also collectors. Um, if you get a chance, check them out. David will put the uh, link to their Facebook page and their information down below in the comments or above the comment section. Um, very nice people. Really work good deals with us and everything. Um, you know, not everything was at face value when we bought bulk items. You know, they gave us some deals on some things. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't stress enough they're very knowledgeable, uh, which there's actually surprisingly probably a good five to seven or eight retro stores around the Atlanta area. And uh, this is by far the best. The store's the cleanest. Uh, they sell everything from comic books to toys to gaming, retro gaming. They had a nice selection. Um, some of the other places we tried, like Gator Games and Noonan, um, I feel like I was going to be raped. I'm, I'm serious. It was very dingy, very dark, unorganized, dirty, not a good selection. At, like, Nintendo games, they had maybe 25 Nintendo games. 
and they were all sports titles. And I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to call yourself a retro store when you don't have much retro. Like they had a lot of Blu-ray and manga for some reason, but you know, to me, that's not a retro video game store. That's a Blu-ray manga store. But anyway, but um, the one thing that uh, DRAM had talked about that I, we I had picked up is still collectible. Um, not that it was rare or anything. Um, I think David portrayed it more as like a super fine, which it was for me. Uh, it won't be for hardly anybody else. But um, one of the things that was really great for me when I was a kid was um, I used to cut a lot of grass just to buy games and everything because, uh, as I've said in a lot of our other videos, you know, uh, we weren't well off by any means growing up. Uh, we were actually, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, we went home was dirt poor, but, you know, we were we were pretty poor. I mean, you know, it, it, it was a lot for me to get a Nintendo for Christmas, you know. But the second game I ever bought with my own money, and I spent a lot of time playing it, uh, and I found this is still collectibles, and I was really surprised when I got it. But, um, again, not a rare game for anybody, but a lot of nostalgia for me, and it was Yonoi. The thing that really brings that memories for this was, <clears throat> when I grew up, I had a friend of mine named Pat. Um, now, Pat's mom uh, was really nice, and his dad was really nice. And, um, you know, they weren't horribly well off either. But I remember what we would do is, at that time, which doesn't seem like a big deal now because we got Little Caesars and everybody else. But back then, Domino's did this deal during the summer. You could get a large one-topping pizza for five bucks, delivered. You know, there wasn't no, you know, no fee or nothing back then. So what me and my friend would do is, you know, we would do it like twice a week. We would go in two fifty a piece, and we would order Domino's pizza. And we play Yonoi. And then for some of the older generation, you'll know that Yonoi is actually an old mascot of Domino's Pizza. So the irony was we would always order pizza and always play Yonoi. Uh, and then uh, the only time that ever actually changed was, uh, unfortunately, my friend Pat's dad passed away. And uh, his mom had a life insurance policy. So uh, she bought him a Super Nintendo. So uh, that was mind-blowing for us. So, uh, Yonoid got replaced. We'd still do the pizza thing, but, um, of course, he had Mario World, but Yonoid got replaced with, um, uh, Kung Fu Heroes. No, it wasn't Kung Fu Heroes. I'm sorry. That was a Nintendo game. Uh, there was something on Super Nintendo that we played all the time. Anyway, but instead of playing Yonoid, we'd order pizza and play it. Uh, it slips my mind at this time because we played so much stuff. But anyway, so as the Ram said, you know, that was a super good find for me because uh, I haven't seen this out in the wild in forever. And uh, the fact that, I mean, again, I had to go uh, at a retro store, it's kind of expected to find things that are hard to find. Uh, like I said, I'm sure I could have got off of eBay probably about 10 bucks, but that's not what it's for me. I like the seek and find, and, you know, it's like getting systems and everything. Uh, I don't prefer to buy them from retro stores. I'd rather find them out in the wild. A, they're going to be a lot cheaper. But B, it's it's the thrill of the hunt for me. Uh, sometimes I break down and um, I cut deals like uh, the Master System and the Power Base Adapter thing. I actually worked a deal with the gentleman at the flea market. You know, I took in a bunch of extra trade stuff and worked out a deal with them. But uh, anyway, again, like DRAM said, this has a lot of, a lot of place in my heart. Uh, oh. A lot of memories and everything that go with this uh, it really means a lot to me because like I said it was one of the games it reminds me of my childhood you know growing up I was probably 13 14 at the time maybe younger actually it's probably about 12 uh, I was in middle school so yeah probably about 12 uh, but again so then I have another gentleman um, that I get with every now and again and I uh, mean him work out trades and everything and he gets stuff that I need I get stuff that he needs uh, and I picked up from him uh, the original Castlevania and the original Contra. Uh, oddly enough, uh, two classic games. I uh, didn't have them in my collection, so I thought, but I did not have the Contra. So the Contra will go into my collection. But, however, I did have Castlevania. Um, I don't know why I thought I had Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Not the original Castlevania, but I did. So what I actually did was worked out a deal and traded it back to D-Round. So now DRAM has a copy, as he mentioned in his video, of Castlevania. 
Um, so works out good for me. Uh, you know, these things are going for about 30 bucks, I think, on eBay. So, you know, I hated a trade for it and really didn't need it. But at the same time, I was able to give DRAM a really good deal. You know, he was able to pick it up. And I know this is one that he definitely wants in his collection. Uh, he likes the horror series. Um, as he said, um, he picked up Castlevania 2 as well at Steel Collectibles. Um, but that's also what I've done. These are the other two things that I got from Steel Collectibles. Um, everybody <laughs> sees me. I, I did pick up Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. And I also picked up Bases Loaded 3. Now, Bases Loaded 4 is obviously the rarest of them uh, and the hardest to find, but 3 is? We'll see. Um, Bases Loaded 3, sorry about that, guys. Um, Bases Loaded 3 is actually kind of rare, too. Uh, now, it's not Bases Loaded 4 rare, because Bases Loaded 4, about 40 bucks on eBay, 40 to 45 bucks. These, I think, are about, I don't know, about mm, 10 to 12, maybe. But again, um, I like to try to complete the series uh, of certain ones I know. Like, I have all the turtles, I have all the double dragons, you know. Uh, I need Castlevania 3, so I might actually pop on over to eBay tonight and pick that up. Uh, I think they're only going for about 25 to 30 bucks. Um, but still, Collectibles has them. Uh, and they also have two from my childhood that I really want to get. Uh, the Dragon Warrior 3 and the Dragon Warrior 2. And uh, together they're 90 bucks, which actually isn't bad. They're loose carts, not boxed or anything, but that's actually a pretty good price for those two. Um, so I may actually end up picking those up. But um, the other thing that I got from them is about 15 sleeves. Uh, obviously there's some on these games. Uh, but these I ran out of, oddly enough. Um, I thought I had enough to at least last me to about 200 games, but uh, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, I quickly ran out. Um, now, the gentleman at the Peachtree Pounders Flea Market, um, Jason, I believe his name is, he's going to actually bring me 100 of these next Saturday. Uh, that's going to be a really good price on them. Um, he, he works with you, too. He's got some pretty good pricing. Um his selection of rare stuff isn't all that great, but his common stuff is really good, and he's reasonable, and he can work with you. Uh, some things, you know, you got to know your pricing. Some stuff's a little overpriced that he has, but a lot of it's decently priced. Um, and he does get rare stuff from time to time. Like, I picked a couple 32X games up from him. Um, he's got some graphic 16 games down there now, like Bonk's Adventure, Bonk's Revenge. Um, I'm trying to think of the other one. Uh, it's a role-playing game. Uh, Dungeon Warrior, maybe, or something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, so, like I said, we picked these up. So, now, this is one of my greatest in-the-wild finds to date. Um, turn around, and a friend of mine was like, look, um, they're having a yard sale slash moving sale type thing in my neighborhood. Um, I haven't stopped by there or looked or anything. He was like, but you may want to check it out because the summer previously, he had picked up a bunch of uh, video games from the guy. So uh, it's on my way to work. So I was like, okay. So I stopped, went in, was talking to the guy, and um, oddly enough, he wasn't very knowledgeable about video game stuff. Which kind of surprised me because, like I said, my friend had said, hey, you know, he picked up some video game stuff from the year before. Some retro stuff. So, I went through there, you know, I was going through his garage and everything. And I noticed this kind of sitting over in the corner. And I was like, hey, is that for sale? And he was like, well, you know, everything's for sale. He's like, because we're moving. He was like, uh, I really don't know much about it. He's like, I don't even know if it works. And I was like, well, I'm going to be honest. I was like, you know, uh... A lot of these things don't work. It, it was a, a common problem. Um, Nintendo was really good about having stuff that didn't have problems, but this particular system was known to have errors, you know, and hardware failures and stuff. Um, so, you know, I told the guy if the price was right, I'd take the chance without being able to test it because um, he didn't have a power supply for it. And so uh, he was like, well, uh, you know, I don't know if you're willing to take a chance. He says, give me 30 bucks. Okay, so, 
this, like I said, has been one of my most sought after systems. You look on eBay, working condition, they're well over $200. I think I just looked at one, uh, the price compare, and it was just the system with no game. It was tested working, but it was $205 plus like 30 bucks shipping. But complete, these complete, working, in good condition with the original game that came with it. Uh, the cheapest I could find was 250 bucks, unboxed. Now, boxed, a whole other story, and I would love to have a box for it. But, it is a complete, and yes, it does work. Virtual Boy. Again, one of the holy grail items for me. Um, I've really been wanting these now. This was the worst system Nintendo ever built. They didn't sell many of them because they were absolutely horrid. Um, I remember reading in the instruction manual that if you were under nine, or yeah, under nine years old, you were not to play this because it would damage your eyes because your eyes were still developing. Um, that is a legit thing from the from their instruction book. But as you can see, I've got the system, the stand, and the reason I took a chance with it, even with it not working. Uh, I was noticing like even just the stands are worth like 30 40 bucks because for some reason this gets lost or this part right here gets broke and it is like really hard to find these and it has the controller that plugs into the headset and the battery pack but also with the battery pack um, you know you can plug in this may not have been a battery pack. I was thinking this was a battery pack. I guess it's not. It's just an AC adapter. But anyway, I had a Super Nintendo adapter, so. But that is it, folks. This has been one of my Holy Grail finds. Um, in the end, I, I can't remember if I just mentioned this or not. Um, I got it for thirty bucks. So, like I said, even if it didn't work, the stand easily sells for thirty bucks. Controllers, I know we're going anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks. The packs go for like 10 to 15 bucks for this, um, or not the pack, but you know, the adapter. Um, so again, I was willing to take a chance because I knew I could part it out and make my money back at 30 bucks. But it all works. And I'm actually going to make a video I'm not a hundred percent sure if it'll pick up or not in the uh, in the camcorder, but I'm gonna hook this all up and make a separate video of just showing kind of what it looks like. Uh, it'll be a little tricky because I'll have to put the camcorder in one of the eyes, but uh, just to show you what it looks like because a lot of people have never seen a Virtual Boy ever. Um, I know like uh, Jenny's never looked in one. Uh, so I let her play it for a little bit this morning. She was playing Mario Tennis with Luigi and all that. And then, of course, uh, even though he wasn't supposed to, I let Andrew play it for a few minutes. Uh, he owns another game. But um, I ordered some games off eBay for it, uh, some of the cheaper ones, just to kind of start my collection. Uh, what I discovered uh, last night in researching the Virtual Boy and the games is the Virtual Boy is actually uh, one of the few systems that Nintendo made that are region free. Um, so Japanese games, plug and pray right out the bat. Uh, now, a lot of people don't know this, Nintendo 64 <laughs> is actually region free. You can play Japanese games on American system, American system on the, the uh, Japanese systems. What you have to do though is, you have to take the cover off of the 64 and remove the two flaps that protect um, that protect where the cartridge goes in to keep dust from in it. You take those flaps off, it allows the Japanese cartridge to sit down on the American system and vice versa. Uh, when I worked at Microplay, we ordered a Japanese system and we were unaware of that. And then um, one day uh, I had to repair one of our rental systems that we were renting. And so when I looked at the Japanese cartridge, because what we had ordered originally, because it hadn't even came out in America yet. We only had the Japanese with Mario and Wave Race. But when I looked at the bottom of a, an American 64 and a Japanese 64, the only thing that looked different was the way the cartridge was cut. So I was like, hmm, I wonder. 
So I, when I had the cover off, I just plugged the Japanese cartridge in because it fit down in the, the slot. And sure enough, powered up, and I was playing the American cartridge on the Japanese system. So I flipped it, I took it apart in the American system, put a Japanese game in it, and it worked. So there's your little tidbit of information. If you have an American 64, you want to play a Japanese game, just take your cover off, standard screwdriver, I believe. If not, you can get the bits off eBay for about five bucks. And you can just take those two little dust cover flaps off, they pop right off, and you can set your Japanese system, or Japanese game into the American system, and you're good to go. Um, same way with Nintendo, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, you can use an, um, a lot of the five screw <coughs> systems like Gyromite and maybe Excitebike 2. There was a couple of the five screw cards. They actually have the adapters in them. You have to, um, you have to open the cartridge up to see, but there will be like a black plastic adapter thing that slides on top of the Gyromite cards or the Gyromite chips inside the system. And you can actually just take... Uh, Put your family, you leave the cover off, put your Famicom game in that, and then plug that into your system. Um, very simple. Uh, with the Super Nintendo, you know, I do believe it was the Action Replay. I could be wrong. It could have been the Game Genie. I don't think it was, but I think it was the Action Replay. You just plug it in the Super Nintendo, plug the Japanese cartridge in, and all those cheat systems back then bypassed the uh, boot up verification to make sure that it was a legit Nintendo cartridge before playing. Um, but it bypasses all that. So uh, a lot of the Saturn was like that too. A lot of people don't know this, but you can order a RAM cart uh, for the Saturn, plug it in the back of the Saturn system, and it would bypass the verification systems, and you can play Japanese Saturn games on American systems. So a little tidbit of information for you. But again, thanks for the video. Thumbs up if you liked it. Like, subscribe. Uh, again, in the um, comment section or right above the comment section, I'll have David put a link to Steel Collectibles Facebook page. Definitely recommend you checking them out. If you go out there, tell them the Game Slayer sent you. Uh, like I said, we're trying to build a rapport with them. And then, uh, you know, maybe they'll take a little better, better care of our customers. I mean, they, again, not that they're not doing it now. They're phenomenal. Uh, like I said, they gave David a deal on some of the games he picked up. Gave me a deal on some of the games I picked up and helped me relive my childhood. So, again, like I said, like, subscribe. Also, keep an eye out for that Virtual Boy video. It should be up not too long after this video comes up uh, depending on when David can get to it and how bored he really is <laughs> so again guys thanks again for watching the video hope you enjoy seeing one of my holy grail items quite possibly some of y'all's too have a great day